Can we go back to the place where we started? Let's do it all again. From where you found me all alone in the darkness, you said it wasn't the end. Can we go back to the place where we started? Let's do it all again. Let's see if I ever felt broken hearted. Hello everyone, my name is Jack Edwards and welcome back to my YouTube channel. For me, this feels like a very full circle moment because on this channel you've seen me graduate from university, have a bit of an existential crisis, apply for so many jobs and get rejected from so many jobs. And now I finally found employment in a job that I absolutely love. I'm currently working as a research assistant on a book in the publishing industry and so today I wanted to show you what a day in my life looks like working in that role. On tonight's program, ladies and gentlemen, we have something that's going to make you sick. Okay, so I don't know if anyone is interested, but this is what I'm wearing to work today. This Argyle sweater gives me research assistant energy, whatever that means. And I'm also wearing some comfy wide leg black trousers. Not that it matters that much because my colleagues only ever see this part of me on Zoom. I could just be wearing a glittery thong on my lower half for all that it matters. Not that I own one of those. So today is Monday, which means I've got a 9 a.m. meeting with the whole team. We basically do a Monday morning debrief so that we can kickstart the week knowing what everyone is up to and how we can assist each other. I'm gonna head to the office, and by the office I mean the, the desk next to my bed because it's 2021, baby. So this week I'm working on fleshing out the new concept for the book and seeing where it fits into the self-help canon. So really trying to identify our niche. I'm also looking back at the previous proposal that we did have to see what kind of evidence and research I can extract from that that's still relevant, even though we've sort of changed course a little bit. Yeah, I've got a lot of reading to get done, so that'll keep me busy. Cool, talk to you soon. Success. I really like the team. It's such a shame that we haven't got to actually meet in person yet. But yeah, doing these whole team meetings and occasionally we have like social it just makes us all feel a bit more connected and part of a team, I suppose. And that's what I was really looking for with a job like this, is to work within a team. Now that the meeting is all done, I'm going to kickstart my week with something relatively straightforward. So I basically have a few Zoom interviews that I need to transcribe and make notes on. So I thought that would be quite a nice way to start the week. So let's go do that. Summer nights when I feel so lazy Sippy wine but I'm not too crazy Would it be different if I told you that I never Okay, so it's my morning break now and I'm going to make myself an iced coffee. The trick is two teaspoons of coffee, one teaspoon of sugar, then four tablespoons of boiling water. Pop a lid on here and shake it up to make it foamy. Add your ice, ice baby, and then add some milk. Can you hear the sirens in the background? That's because this is so good, it should be criminal. Cheers! And let's use this opportunity to talk about our sponsor, which is BBC Sounds. I'm so buzzing about this. I freaking love BBC Sounds. I'm going to stop aggressively waving my biscuit at you. It is the place to go to to find exciting and diverse music mixes, BBC radio, and podcasts. And my go-to podcast recently has been Grounded with Louis Theroux. He has the most amazing guests. And I feel like he's such a good host because he really brings out the best in people and has really thought-provoking discussions. Specific episodes I would recommend to you would be the episode with Helena Bonham Carter. Oh my god, they went to the same school. How mad is that? John Ronson, who is my favourite non-fiction author, and Michaela Cole, who wrote I May Destroy You and also starred in it and is just incredible. Those episodes are so, so fascinating. I guess you could say that Louis' podcast is getting me through this isolation period. Am I right? And best believe, anytime I'm walking anywhere, tidying my flat, having a coffee break like this, I'm listening to a podcast. Also, in the least tragic way possible. During this lockdown, I'm living alone. I know, world's smallest violin. Because I'm on my own, I feel like I've been particularly enjoying chatty podcasts where you just feel like you're in the room with people. It's so cozy. And I've also been hosting my own little podcast club on my Instagram stories where I'm recommending a different episode each week. And it's just my favourite thing to do ever. So the link to download BBC Sounds will be in my crotch down below. Go check it out. Thank you BBC Sounds. I love ya. So I've been working my way through a book called Grit which is by Angela Duckworth and it's basically about passion and perseverance and how talent is like a base layer for success but then you need hard work to actually achieve goals. So I finished reading that. What I do is I type up a kind of summary chapter by chapter so that the team that I work for don't have to read the book. They can just see a quick kind of summary of what each chapter says. Um, so I put in all of the key anecdotes, the key takeaways, the key ideas. And then I'll also have a quote bank. So anything that's like a quote or idea that we might want to reference or cite, I'll put them into a separate document with page numbers so that it can all be tracked just to make sure we're crediting other people's work. And my next book is this one. This is called The Happiness Advantage and it's by Sean Acker. I listened to this guy's TED talk and it was really interesting. So I think this could be quite a helpful book to 
to read. And yeah, working a job where I have to do research and read loads of books is doing wonders for my Goodreads reading challenge this year. Because I'm getting through these babies like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> so then we just repeat the process for the next one and the next one and the next one. Also, if you are doing research in any capacity, so whether that's for a job, for school, for an essay, anything like that, use the bibliography, use the sources that these people cite because they've done loads of research and then they share their bibliography. For example, like, there. At the back of the book you'll have all of the different sources that they used and often you find something that is so valuable in there that doesn't come up when you google or ha you haven't spotted before. So I find that very useful. The bibliography just unlocks so much more. Those winter days where it's cold outside But I'll be warm, I'll be safe from the lies They hear the rumours and expect high price I'm seeing through it all, I'm lost in your eyes I've been kind of working on jazzing up this little corner of my room. This mirror is very cool, maybe even too cool for me actually. It's kind of like asymmetric. You know when there was that meme about RuPaul being like, I don't want to see any H&M? Yeah, when I saw that on Twitter, I had literally just pressed checkout on the H&M website for this. So that made me feel fantastic. So I realized that I haven't actually properly explained what it is that I do. Should this have been at the beginning of the video? Yes, probably. But you know what? What's done is done and what's done is done. Essentially, there is an author who is an expert in their field and is therefore writing a self-help book to help other people become masters in this area of expertise. But equally, they are a professional and a very busy person. And the process of writing a self-help book requires a lot of research because you have to back up every claim you make. You need empirical evidence, you need case studies, you need a really diverse range of sources. That research is a huge undertaking, and so that is where I come in. I am working as a researcher on this book. So I go digging for case studies and journal articles and books, which will help the author make the point that they are trying to make. So I'm constantly trying to think of all the different audiences who might read this book and how we can apply these theories to them, and evidence that we can find that backs up that this actually works. So one job of mine is just finding all of the articles and all of the sources that we need to investigate. Then the second kind of follow on job from that is to go through the articles and basically work out what is worth the author's time. So I make notes, I write little summaries, I keep these big research banks so that everything is searchable so we can just type in a keyword and we can find all of our resources and research on motivation, for example. So just as an example, this is a kind of template research log that I made just so that I can keep track of everything that I'm searching and knowing where it came from. From. This is also what I used to do when I was at university and wrote essays. So basically you have the name of the text, the quote or idea that you're using. This section does say PP, um, but what it means is like page number. Then here is where I would put the citation information. Every publishing house has a different uh, house style of how they do this. So I just need to make sure I'm doing that right. Also, every single publisher will also have their own house style in terms of grammar and punctuation. So, you know, things like whether they use the Oxford comma, which words they capitalize. So much goes on behind the scenes that you wouldn't even consider when you just sit and read the book. I think the vibe is just so that everything that one publishing house produces is all one sort of house style. It all kind of is cohesive. Um, but yeah, that's an editor's job, not mine. And then the final section says notes. And this is where I add keywords so that I can search for them later. And also, you know, ideas that come off of reading this particular quote or idea. And that final section encourages me to constantly be thinking analytically and critically rather than just kind of taking everything in as absolute fact. And basically I'm streamlining the process so the author can do what they do best and that is write the book. So then the subsequent kind of other aspect of the job is the fact that because I'm doing all of this research, I become a really good person for the author to sort of bounce ideas off of because I've also done the digging to understand the counter arguments and the case studies that back it up. So we chat regularly about all the different ideas and at the moment in this really early stage of the book where the author is writing up his proposal, we're trying to really nail and refine the concept so that it's something that no one else has ever written before and it's better than anything else that has been written before. That's the idea. So I'm checking to make sure everything that we write is original, like no one's used those sources before, they're up to date and modern and also that all of the citations are correct so that when the author references this research that I'm doing, Doing, it's crediting the right people and not plagiarizing. What I'm realizing is that self-help books are a real blend of fact and philosophy, so you need to have the concrete evidence to back up your philosophical observations. And also there's a lot of thinking involved, so we have done some soul searching, last week we were talking about the meaning of life, that was kind of intense, kind of breaking down what even is the purpose of this life. So it keeps me busy and I'm learning so much both about the publishing industry and how these books go from idea and concept to published article of information. And also every time I read an article, I'm obviously taking that information in and I'm learning loads. So it's all good fun to be honest. I'm having a nice time. So right now, well, firstly, I'm wrapped in a blanket because it is Baltic. It is so cold in London today and it's just like wet 
and windy and gross. I cannot wait for more daylight hours, more sunshine. I feel like the weather has never really affected my mood until like this year, but I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. Anyway, what was I saying? What I was going to say is I've now got a meeting with the author and we're going to discuss title ideas and um, just the overall concept of the book really. So I've written down a list of like 45 ideas for potential titles. It's so hard because you want to nail the title, especially in this genre, like self-help books. I feel like the title really makes or breaks the book. So I spent quite a lot of time thinking about and looking up idioms and sayings and phrases and metaphors and you know synonyms even and just had a big fat brainstorm and so I think it will be good to discuss. I am going to take the blanket off because I am a professional. Don't know if you could uh, tell. We just pop that there. Also controversial opinion but I low-key really enjoy zoom calls because I love getting to see other people's houses in the background because I'm nosy. You can bet if you've got a bookshelf in your zoom background I am not paying attention to a word you are saying. I'm reading the book titles on your bookshelf. So yeah that meeting is well now so I'm gonna go. Meeting is all wrapped up. I'll drink to that. Shall we talk about how good mango juice is? Are we ready to have that conversation? I thought it might be interesting to quickly touch on like payment and basically like how my employment kind of works. I am essentially working freelance because even though this book is going to be published by a major publisher, I don't work for the publishing house. I'll be kind of working with them. And so that basically means I'm working with this specific author on this specific project for this specific book versus working in-house at the publisher. So I would work for them and they would just assign me different projects to work on. So the payment is what's called pro rata. So basically, if you imagine like a full time salary, I get a proportion of the salary based on how many hours I actually work. So I essentially have a timesheet and then I quote for the amount of time that I work. To put it like numerically, if the salary was £20,000 for 40 hours a week, if you worked 30 hours a week instead, then you'd get £15,000. Do you see what I mean? I hope that makes sense. I also hope that maths is right because English student over here, maths was not my strong point. I did actually retake my maths GCSE, but we don't need to talk about that. I just wanted to point out like how the payment kind of works for a job like this. Just in case any of you are interested, the publishing industry is very cool. And there's so much range, so many different things you can do. It's the versatility for me. We use Notion for pretty much everything at work, but there's very little I can actually show you on here. And I've never used Notion before, but I'm actually really enjoying using it. It's quite a cool way of organizing everything and keeping track of everything all in one central hub that we can all access. I'm not gonna lie, I am a massive tech granddad and I just couldn't get to grips with it at first, but I think I think I've cracked it. Instead, I thought we could do a desk tour. So hello MTV and welcome to my home office, aka this corner desk. I get so many questions about this. This is part of the Bronx range at Next Home. So I have my laptop, this little sign that says work hard and be nice to people, which I think is a good mantra for life. This whiteboard I find so useful because I can kind of just brain dump and brainstorm and mind map things that don't need to be neat because I can just wipe them away afterwards and it really helps me focus. What is this back here? Oh my God, this is my gym log. I bought this with the intention of turning my life around and getting fit, but then gyms closed the next day. So it wasn't meant to be. Oh, see ya. <laughs> I have a giant paper clip, a lamp, and the remnants of an iced coffee. Did someone say interior design? A bunch of pens and pencils, and then my Mac, which I use for editing YouTube videos. Some ornaments, notice the cocktail mixer. That is not something I necessarily do at work. A bunch of books, my YouTube 100,000 subscriber plaque, which is still crazy to me, and some houseplants. I'm not gonna lie, my room is kind of a uh, houseplant graveyard right now, because I left my plants over Christmas, and they're not doing so well, okay? So I'm trying to revive them at the moment. Also, I have this vanilla candle because I felt like it's very adulty to have a candle burning. However, I think the smell is sort of putting me to sleep, so I might blow that out, you know. Another bunch of books and then my camera equipment up there, more rotting carcasses, stationary storage, and then a bunch of self-help books that I'm either reading for work or for a YouTube video that I'm working on at the moment. And that, my friends, is the desk of dreams. Okay, so work for the day is done. Why do I look like I'm about to judge the X Factor. I look like I'm about to tell you that you're through to boot camp. That was not the plan for this clip. The plan was to show you this. This is something, oh. This is something that I bought for myself the other day and it's a puzzle, but all of the pictures are iconic book covers. And I'm so excited. It's a thousand pieces. So this is going to keep me busy. I think this is the best way I've ever invested my money. You know, sometimes I'm actually a parody of myself and it's kind of worrying. That's a lot of pieces. Yeah, this might be harder than I first thought, but you know what? Lockdown is happening. We're in this for the long run. And this is my life now. And of course, doing my puzzle, perfect time to listen to a BBC Sounds podcast. So Louis Theroux, 
I'm coming your way, my friend. For dinner this evening, I'm going to be cooking up the famous TikTok pasta because I love pasta and I love TikTok. So what could possibly go wrong? Actually, I'll tell you what could possibly go wrong. The fact that I'm not following a recipe. I'm just very boldly assuming that I will remember the TikTok that I watched four days ago. But if this pasta makes me dance like Charlie D'Amelio, then it will have been worth it. I'm pretty sure you add feta and cherry tomatoes to a baking tray, season and add olive oil, and then you just chuck it in the oven. And this basically is then then mashed up and used as your sauce for your pasta. Nothing gets pasta me, am I right? Well, we'll find out if I'm right. Wait a damn minute, that looks kind of edible. Okay, I added some bacon and two extra tomatoes and wowee. Okay, here goes. Whoa. Wow. Why has TikTok taught me more than my actual degree? All I'm saying is if you catch me on your For You page doing the Renegade, you know why? I think this will morph me into Addison Rae. And now for some pudding. I bought these this morning, and if you haven't tried these yet from Aldi, these will change your whole life. So these are fizzy pineapple, and these are tangy watermelon. Yes, they are sweet. Yes, I am a 22-year-old man. But I have got the sweetest two, and these are just chef kiss. Oh, heavenly. Mm. I think I might have actually regressed, because while I eat my sweets, I'm going to play some Animal Crossing like the fully functioning adult that I am. Seriously though, I haven't played this game in literal months and then all of a sudden, just as my schedule got really busy, my brain was like, I wonder how my Animal Crossing villagers are. I made a little library in the game and I genuinely think it's the biggest thing I've accomplished since like March last year. Do you know what would make living alone a whole lot easier would be if my boiler didn't make random spluttering noises every 25 minutes because every time it scares the sh out of me. I just started a new job, like I am too busy to be murdered right now. This evening I am going to crack on with some editing. This is looking cozy as hell. Also, this light, £10 from Amazon, you're welcome. And now I'm going to read my book. This is Think Like a Monk by Jay Shetty. I've heard very mixed reviews about this, so quite intrigued to get started. But thank you so, so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for watching it all the way through. I hope that you enjoyed this kind of insight into one of many roles in the publishing industry, and there are so many other really, really fascinating jobs that you can do within this industry, so definitely look it up if you you are interested. Of course, an absolutely huge shout out to BBC Sounds for sponsoring this video and making it happen. I appreciate it so much and it's an absolute privilege to get to promote an app that I use every day anyway. If you're new around here, make sure you subscribe down below and you can give this video a like if you liked it. If you like, I'm going to read my book and then head to bed because I've got work again tomorrow. So um, the cycle begins all over again. Love you loads and loads. I'll be back very soon with a brand new video and in the meantime, have a lovely time. Bye! I don't see ya. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night.